Session 102 Chapter 2 Verse 87 And we gave Moses the scripture, and we sent messengers after him in succession. We gave Jesus, son of Mary, clear signs, and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. So how is it that whenever a messenger brings you something you do not like, you become arrogant, calling some impostors and killing others? Chapter 2, verse 87 In previous verses, God illustrated how the children of Israel treated Prophet Moses. In this verse, he describes what they did after his death. After Moses, a number of prophets were sent to guide the Israelites and save them from their own repeated transgressions. Here, Allah specifically mentions prophets Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them, because Judaism and Christianity were the two main religions before Islam. Keep in mind that a number of prophets were sent to guide the Israelites before Jesus. Each time the Jewish people transgressed, strayed from God's path, and chased after worldly gains, God would bless them with a new prophet to remind them of their faith and bring them back to the truth. Sadly, these gains were short-lived, and more often than not, they turned back to defiance and disobedience. God says, And we gave Moses the scripture, and we sent messengers after him in succession, explaining that he did not leave the Israelites without help. Rather, he supported them with the Torah and with several messengers. The list of the Israelite prophets is long. Some we know about, such as David, Solomon, Jethro, Ezekiel, Elisha, Jonah, Zechariah, John, and many we don't know about. Peace be upon them all. God says, There are the prophets that I have told you about, and there are the prophets that I have not told you about. As to Moses, God directly spoke to him. Chapter 4, verse 164 The Jewish people often take pride in the large number of messengers sent to them, boasting about being God's chosen people. However, needing many messengers is a reflection not of piety, rather it is a testament to the constant transgression and indulgence in sin. Allah, after all, sends prophets when corruption is rife and sin is commonplace. Let's examine the phrase, We gave Jesus, son of Mary, clear signs and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. God supported Prophet Jesus with great miracles, which proved, beyond any doubt, the truthfulness of his message. Prophet Jesus was sent to a people who were immersed in materialism and tangible gains. Their hearts were far from spirituality, and they did not believe in the unseen. Recall that in previous verses, they asked Prophet Moses to physically see God. And when manna and quail were sent to them daily from the heavens, they feared that it would stop one day and requested to grow their own vegetables. Such people needed a messenger whose entire life revolved around the unseen in order to turn their hearts and minds to the Lord. Thus, Prophet Jesus' birth, death, and miracles were all matters of the unseen. Allah wants to show all of us that His abilities are not ruled by the physical and the material. Rather, it is He who rules the means and sets the laws. Whatever He commands be, it becomes. He demonstrates this ability through all matters of creation. God says, The kingdom of the heavens and earth belongs to Allah. He creates whatever He wills. He gives daughters to whoever He wishes and he gives sons to whoever he wishes, or he gives them both sons and daughters, and he makes whoever he wishes barren. Truly, he is all-knowing, all-powerful. Chapter 42, verses 49 and 50 The mating of a male and a female is the means for reproduction, but God's will and ability is above all means and causes. How many perfectly healthy couples marry try to have children, but are unable to, despite the existence of all means. 
Wasn't the creation of Prophet Jesus from a female only a clear display of God's ability? The verse continues, And supported him with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit refers to the Archangel Gabriel. Here you may ask, Weren't all messengers and prophets supported by the angel Gabriel? Why did God specify Jesus? We answer that Prophet Jesus was specifically mentioned because he was accompanied by the angel Gabriel continually from the moment of conception till the time of death. He, unlike any other human being, was conceived through the breath of the archangel, and he was born without a father. Thus, he faced constant hostilities and accusations from many people. God Almighty kept the Holy Spirit in his company at all times for protection, support, and to aid him in all his miracles. It was also through the Archangel Gabriel that Jesus, peace be upon him, was raised to the heavens. This matter is where many scholars differ in opinion. Did Jesus, peace be upon him, ascend to heaven alive or dead? Whatever the case may have been, it should make no difference to our faith. Some people argue that it is unlikely for a human to be raised alive to the heavens. We answer with the question, Was Jesus' birth like any other human? Of course not. He was born to a virgin mother. So it should be no surprise to us if his death is also unusual. Keep in mind that Prophet Jesus is not disassociated from death. He is to die like every other human. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad ascended to the heavens during the night journey, Miraj, and spent a good part of the night there before descending back to earth. Similarly, Prophet Jesus ascended to the heavens to return at the end of times and spend the rest of his life on earth. The only difference between the two events is the duration of stay in the heavens. Prophet Muhammad returned after one night, while Prophet Jesus will return before the day of resurrection. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, By he in whose hands my soul rests, Jesus the Son of Mary is to descend amongst you as a just ruler. He will shatter the cross, slaughter the pig, and abolish jizya. Wealth will be so abundant that no one will need it. The Messenger said, My Lord, my people treat this Qur'an as something to be ignored. Chapter 25, verse 30 Do not abandon God's book. Please take a moment to subscribe and to share with your family and friends. Visit us at www.qur'angarden.com Session 103 Chapter 2 Verse 87 A Continuation And we gave Moses the scripture, and we sent messengers after him in succession. We gave Jesus, son of Mary, clear signs, and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. How is it that whenever a messenger brings you something you do not like, you become arrogant, calling some impostors and killing others? Chapter 2, verse 87 Prophet Jesus was sent as a guidance and an example for the children of Israel. God says, Surely he was not other than a servant, whom we favored, and we made him an example for the children of Israel. Chapter 43, verse 59 Allah gave Jesus clear miracles to authenticate his prophethood such as the ability to heal the blind and the ability to resurrect the dead through God's will. These miracles were of two types, clarified in the following verse. And a messenger to the children of Israel, Assuredly, I have come to you with a clear proof from your Lord. I fashioned for you out of clay something in the shape of a bird, then I breathe into it, and it becomes a bird by God's permission. And I heal the blind from birth, and the leper, and I revive the dead by God's permission. 
and I inform you of what things you eat and what you store up in your houses. Surely in this is a clear proof for you, if you are sincere believers. Chapter 3, verse 49 we can understand that Allah granted Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, two types of miracles. The first type were abilities given to Jesus so he is able to perform certain miracles by himself, such as knowing what people had just eaten and what they store and hide in their houses. The second type of miracles were those that were not inherent to Jesus. Rather, they required God's direct permission and power every single time. Miracles like the resurrection of the dead and breathing life into objects. These miracles could not be done without God's will and cannot be exclusively attributed to the Prophet Jesus. We mentioned earlier that every prophet was supported by the Holy Spirit, which is the Archangel Gabriel. But Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, had Gabriel's support and presence at all times. The word holy means absolute purity. Let's take a few moments to look into the meaning of the word spirit. A spirit is what gives us life, meaning, and purpose. The soul inside your body is referred to as a spirit because it gives your body life and purpose. Without your soul, you would be dead. Allah also refers to the Quran as a spirit because it gives our lives meaning, purpose, and direction. Without the guiding light of the Qur'an, life would be useless. God says, So we have revealed a spirit to you by our command. You knew neither the scripture nor the faith, but we made it a light, guiding with it whoever we will of our servants. Truly you give guidance to the straight path. Chapter 42, verse 52 the Qur'an is a spirit, and whoever ignores God's teachings leads life without values. The verse continues, So how is it that, whenever a messenger brings you something you do not like, you become arrogant, calling some impostors and killing others? The verb like is translated from the Arabic origin hawa which refers to personal whims and desires and also indicates decline and loss. The Israelites assume themselves to be lawmakers in no need for any heavenly guidance. They often set laws according to their whims and what benefited them at that moment. Thus, whenever a messenger brought them God's teachings, they viewed it as a great inconvenience. They often disbelieved and on many occasions killed the prophets. Prophet Muhammad warned us from acting the same way. He, peace be upon him, said, My example and your example is that of a person sitting around a fire. He sees insects and moths falling into the fire, and he would make every effort to save them from it. I am holding you back from fire, but you are slipping from my hands. Many of us frantically chase our desires and the allure of this world, and Prophet Muhammad is trying to save us from ourselves and redirect us towards the hereafter. God says, O oh, you who believe, respond to God and to the messenger when the messenger calls you to that which gives you life, and know well that surely God intervenes between a person and his heart, and that he it is to whom you will be gathered. Chapter 8, verse 24 God calls those who reject his messengers arrogant, indicating that they falsely regard themselves high above the prophet's guidance and claim that they do not need any help. Take a moment to ask yourself, is your status, or anyone's status, equal to God who sets life's laws? Definitely not then how can any of us act arrogantly towards God's teachings? When prophets came to the Israelites carrying God's teachings, they were faced with great hostilities. God says, You become arrogant, calling some impostors and killing others. The messengers were accused of lying, not because they were untruthful, 
but because their message was not convenient for the Israelites at the time. Sadly, on several occasions, things went further than calling them liars, and God's prophets were murdered. This shows moral bankruptcy and weakness. When you kill someone for their ideas, it means you cannot face them intellectually. You do not have better ideas, and you cannot handle the truth. So your only option is to kill them and try to silence their ideas for good. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Convey my teachings to the people, even if it is only a single verse. Please take a moment to subscribe and to share with your family and friends. Visit us at www.qurangarden.com Session 104, Chapter 2, Verse 88 And they said, Our hearts are encased. No, indeed, Allah has cursed them for their disbelief, so little do they believe. Chapter 2, Verse 88 In this verse, God is informing us how the children of Israel justified their repeated transgressions and killing their prophets. The phrase they used, our hearts are encased, carries two meanings. First, it can be used to take pride in one's own beliefs while rejecting any other points of view. In other words, our hearts are encased means that we have sufficient knowledge and enough faith that we do not need any advice or help from a new prophet. Second, the phrase is often used as an excuse to blame God for sealing our hearts and preventing the rays of guidance from reaching us. In other words, our hearts are encased means that we cannot help our actions because God destined us to disbelief. Let's take a moment to answer these claims. If you say that God had encased your heart and destined you to disbelief, wouldn't you ask yourself why? What is the reason? Allah provides us with the answer. He says, No, indeed, Allah has cursed them for their disbelief, so little do they believe. The phrase, No, indeed, confirms that their statement is untrue, and what would follow is the truth. God is refuting that they have enough knowledge in their hearts, and He is also refuting their claim that He encased their hearts. The fact is, God had cursed them and banished them from His mercy. This did not happen for no reason. It was a direct response to their deeds. God deprived them of His mercy because when guidance came to them time and again, they denied it and insisted on disbelief. They were not cursed from the beginning. They had actually earned God's anger. Some people try to disassociate themselves from the responsibility of faith and deed and blame God for their disbelief. They use verses like this one for evidence. What about those whose evil deeds are made alluring to them so that they think they are good? God leaves whoever He will to stray and guides whoever He will. Do not waste your soul away with regret for them. God knows exactly what they do. Chapter 35, verse 8 The disbelievers think that the phrase, God leaves whoever he will to stray and guides whoever he will, will save them from hellfire on the day of resurrection because God is responsible for misguiding them. They claim that since God had willed them to disbelief, what were they to do? We answer that a person who blames God for a choice that he or she made has not studied the Qur'an. Let's take a look at the following verses. That is because they preferred the worldly life over the hereafter and that God does not guide the disbelieving people. Chapter 16, verse 107. And in another verse, Abraham said, So indeed it is Allah who brings the sun from the east, you bring it from the west. The disbeliever was therefore baffled, 
and Allah does not guide the unjust. Chapter 2, verse 258 And lastly, say, if your fathers, sons, brothers, wives, tribes, the wealth you have acquired, the trade which you fear will decline, and the dwellings you love are dearer to you than God and his messenger, and the struggle in his cause, then wait until God brings about his punishment. God does not guide those who are corrupt. Chapter 9, verse 24 These verses clearly highlight the three groups of people who do not receive God's guidance, the disbelievers, the corrupt, and the unjust. Allah sent His messengers, His scriptures, and His guidance to all mankind. Moreover, He created the universe and subjected it to our service, so each one of us may ponder the creation. Sadly, many people opposed God, refused to listen to His messengers, followed their own desires, and took the beauty of creation for granted. The truth is, Allah had blessed humanity with His guidance and provided all of us with countless bounties. He came forth with love and mercy. Those who responded to this love with denial and chose disbelief earned themselves God's curse. In response, He sealed their hearts and left them for what they chose. Allah made His message clear to all humanity. So if you choose to oppress others, rob them of their rights, and cheat them, then God will seal your heart. Likewise, if you indulge in sin and rush towards all that God prohibited, then God will deprive you of His mercy. Allah does not force you towards guidance. He is the one who granted you free will. Keep in mind that God Almighty has demonstrated to you that He can have absolute power over you if He so wills. Take the examples of your internal organs. They operate completely outside your will. Your heart, blood circulation, kidneys, and liver are subjected to God's will. Likewise, the calamities that may happen to you are out of your control. You cannot prevent disease, a car crash, or a rock from falling on you. Allah gave you full control over one area of your life, your choices and actions. Are you going to use these great gifts to practice God's teachings? This freedom is what you and I will be responsible for on the day of resurrection. If you choose disbelief for yourself, God does not force you to believe. Rather, He informs you of the consequences. If you want to benefit from God's guidance, then you have to play by the rules. God informed you that He does not guide the disbelievers, the unjust, and the corrupt. If you do not intend guidance for yourself, then feel free to discard God's rules. This brings us back to the verse, when the children of Israel claimed that God had placed a seal on their hearts. God answered that they were the ones who selected this path. He said, No, indeed, Allah has cursed them for their disbelief. Being cursed means being expelled from God's mercy and only God can make this happen. He banished them from His mercy due to their disbelief. God does not chase after those who deny Him, nor does He want His messengers to fatigue themselves trying to get people to accept faith. The messenger's duty is to convey the message and inform people that judgment in the hereafter will be just and will be based on their choices and actions. God says, you may perhaps wear out your heart because they do not come to belief. If we had wished, we could have sent them down a sign from heaven at which their necks would stay bowed in utter humility. Chapter 26, verses 3 and 4 Allah wants you to freely turn to Him out of love. He does not benefit from your faith and deeds. The benefits and rewards will be for you alone. Whether you have faith in your heart or not does not affect His being. Allah is self-sufficient. He says, God bears witness that there is no God but Him, as do the angels and those who have knowledge. He upholds justice. There is no God but Him, the Almighty, the All-Wise. 
chapter 3, verse 18. Faith in Allah is your personal treasure on the day of resurrection. It will be your salvation on that terrible day. The Messenger said, My Lord, my people treat this Qur'an as something to be ignored. Chapter 25, verse 30 Do not abandon God's book. Please take a moment to subscribe and to share with your family and friends. Visit us at www.qur'angarden.com